Hey folks, Joseph A. Sabor here. Are you in for a flipping tweet? Because I'm going to be reviewing a movie that came out 15 years ago, made in Preston, Idaho. It's called Napoleon Dynamite. And this is a really big, flippin' sweet Blu-ray. Where did I got it? What did you think? Best Buy! Gosh! Ah, <laughs> uh, but it's true. Yes, I did got this at Best Buy for $4.99. <laughs> That's like a dollar an hour! Okay, yes, yeah, so I'm just using you know, Napoleon's uh, monotone voice that he has. But yes, it, it is a story about uh, a socially awkward teenager from Preston, Idaho, you know, who lives with his grandmother, along with his brother, Kip, he loves to chat with babes every day on the internet. Plus, we have Uncle Rico, who's about to take care of them for a while after... Grandma had an accident, you know, hanging out with uh, her boyfriend, you know, riding around the dunes. Then we meet like a shy girl named Deb who works at a strip mall or at any various businesses she does, even though she is a high school student. But she's make she's getting all all that for so she could pay for college. And yeah, she does do all these glamour shots. And also we meet a foreign student from Mexico named Pedro, who's uh, also very shy, but hey, he suddenly becomes friends with Napoleon a after he first met. So. <laughs> okay. Yeah, this Blu-ray is definitely um, a significant upgrade to the the special edition DVD set that I also own, which is this one. <laughs> yes, all in that lenticular holographic uh, slipcover. So when you move around, you see Napoleon Dynamite dancing while wearing the Bull for Pedro shirt. Yeah, to the song Canned Heat by Jamakui. I think that's how you pronounce his name. Jamakua. Or, or I think it was Jamakwai. <laughs> yeah. You can see the back right there. Yeah, and of course I got this on sale for $19.99 when I got this at FYE. Yes, I had an FYE at the Glendale Galleria in Glendale, which used to be the warehouse, but it's no longer there anymore. It actually used to be a Carl's Jr. too, uh, before they had to turn into one. So. So this is what it looks like right here. The both for Pedro and it has all these pins around. Yeah, that says both for Pedro, Pedro will protect, that sort of thing. There's even say Liger's rule. Yes, because a Liger, which which that was one of his drawings, where it's a mix between a male lion and a female tiger. <laughs> yeah. And Heck yeah! Right there. And yes, no summer. Yeah, that's that's the other candidate uh, for the uh, <laughs> the uh, the student body president. So they wanted to have Pedro to join in. I mean, well, yeah, that's what Pedro wanted to do. And then there's all the features. So you get like tons of good features here. You got like on this one, you get like an audio commentary with um, director co-writer Jared Hess, yeah, because he came up with the idea of Napoleon Dynamite through the short film of his, which is also included on this release. But he joins in with his wife, um, Dewucha. He also got. John Heater, the actor who played Napoleon Dynamite with producer Jeremy Kuhn. 
Then you got an all new, well at the time, you had all new cast commentary by Aaron Rule, Efren Ramirez, uh, John Grice, yeah, it's Grice, not Grice, and Tina Majorino. And this too, you got the world premiere, Jared, he Jared Hess, which is a non-linear look at the director of Napoleon Dynamite. You know, when they, you know, basically they were having a premiere at the Sundance Film Festival. So it shows like back and forth, you know, like what happened in the past, uh, what happened, and then it goes directly to the future you know, during the world premiere. Like before now, yeah, it shows like weeks, months, a year. You got On Location, which is an all-new documentary at the time. Yeah, where it just shows uh, shots of how they did those scenes. Very interesting because we get to see everything that they did from the movie. And all-new outtakes and additional extended and alternate scenes. Yes, you get a lot of that too. Even though they go up for like five minutes or so. Never before seen audition clips. Yes, you get a, basically audition clips with uh, basically Efren Ramirez uh, along with Tina Majorino and even Haley Duff. Yes, the oldest sister of Hillary. Napoleon and Pedro sightings. Yeah. And yes, you've got Palooka, the short film, with commentary by Jared Hess, along with John Heater and Jeremy McCoon. Wedding of the Century, which is the making of featurettes. Yeah, they, they did the featurette for the film. They also have MTV on-air promo spots with Still Photo Gallery and a whole lot more. Yes, you get it all. On this set and the Blu-ray. <laughs> Oh, and yeah, I'm definitely going to show you what it looks like. Uh, they came with a booklet, too. Right here. <laughs> yeah, you can see the Liger. Flippin' sweet! <laughs> okay, alright. Well, oh yeah, you know what, actually I'm going to show you the disc. Yeah, this is what it looks like. Yeah, you see the Napoleon Dynamite. That's <laughs> brother Kip. And then you see um, Deb and Pedro. Yeah, he wears the wig and stuff. Yeah, it's too bad there was a little bit of cracks on the inner rain though, but it still plays perfectly. Okay. Now I just want to look at the uh, booklet here, so I'm going to show you it. Hoping that can be alright. Um, here it is. <laughs> it says Napoleon Dynamite voted most likely to find Sasquatch and his motto is gosh what do you think freaking idiot sweet it's been summer vacation hunting wolverines in Alaska what do you think <laughs> yeah Pedro one for governor of Idaho his motto is like what are my skills? Or spend summer vacation building cakes. <laughs> yeah. So right there. <clears throat> then you got Kip Dynamite. Yeah, his brother. And you have Deb right there. Yeah. It's bolded most likely to appear in an online dating advertisement. His motto is, I'm sure there's a babe out there for you two somewhere. And spend summer vacation in a chat room. <laughs> yeah, La Fonda right there. Yeah, the uh, the black chick. Yeah, and then you got Deb. Work for Isaac Mazawahi. It, her motto is, I could wrap you in a foam or something billowy. Spend summertime making boondoggle key chains and glamour shots by Deb. Wow, look at that. So cute. And then there's another one. 
Here's Uncle Wiko with Summer and Rex Kondo. <laughs> okay, sorry. It says Uncle Rico most most likely to still live in a band 25 years from now. Yeah, the, that lovely uh, semi-niche uh, band. His motto is, if Coach had put me in the fourth quarter, we'll have been state champions. It's been summertime selling breast enhancers. Yeah. Summer has uh, become Miss Idaho. Her motto is, with me, it will be summer all year long. It's been summertime being popular. Yeah. Unlikely bitch. <laughs> but Rex Kondo, on the other hand, he delivers a roundhouse kick to the face. His motto is, Do you think everyone thinks I'm a failure? Because I got started to go home to at night. It's been summertime bullying to his sensei. <laughs> oh yeah, he's just hilarious. Die Rich Bader. Yeah. And then, of course... Alright. And then I'm going to show you the Blu-ray, what it looks like. Hopefully it's probably going to take a lot longer than I thought. But yeah, this is going to be a long review. Yeah. It's good that they used the original cover art. That's exactly how it looked on previous home videos and posters. And yeah, you can see the back <laughs> with all the tater tots and everything. Give me some of your tots! Can I have some of your tots? Or something like that. Yeah. Has all the features. Flipping features. <laughs> okay. Uh, yeah. There you go. Napoleon Dynamite. <laughs> yeah, just chilling around. In a lovely couch. When I first saw this in 2004, in theaters, I started to fall in love with this character. I really did. I actually dressed up as Napoleon Dynamite uh, for Halloween. You know, I had to wear those, uh, this particular glasses right here. I had to find the, the puffy red wig and well, I had to like dress up in a suit or, or any other to become the character and try to do the voice, the deeper monotone voice, sound exactly like. <laughs> that was fun. Yeah, back in 2005. And another reason why I love this movie to death was because. It spoke to me. I mean, this is a character who's basically an underdog trying to fit in with all the students around at Preston High School or all the way around. He's basically unpopular, but he does actually have some good skills. I mean, yes, <laughs> he is a great... Um, He's a great uh, fighter at times, but he's also can draw a lot of amazing drawings. Like he's he's into mythical beast. Yeah, I mentioned the liger, and also unicorns. I mean that explains why he has all of that in the <laughs> his room. Everything. He even wears a blue blue shirt with the unicorn and says endurance. But hey, he's, he's doing what he does best, and, and no matter what, he also has some, but no matter what, he's an awesome guy. But he also has some awesome dance moves that he can do, I mean, even though he had to make practice through a video that he bought at the first store, but he has a lovely suit um, that he was going to use for the prom when he got it at the first store. That's a, but another reason why I love the movie, too, is that, yes, um, I can relate to this character because he's an underdog, again. You know, he doesn't get any respect that he deserves, but no matter what he tries, you know, he's, he'll always be a cool guy. 
Plus, it had a lot of colorful characters that you meet that you've never seen before. You know, it's not exactly as cliche as you may think, but it's close. But no, it's it's different. Plus, it's a small town, so this is basically a, a small farm town where he does actually go to uh, where Napoleon also works. Uh, in a farm, you know, just going around suspecting and trying to discover what's inside the farm, you know, like the chickens, and going inside the chicken coop and even explaining to the farmer, do they have large talons? What? Large talons? I don't understand what you say, boy. <laughs> that sort of thing. And He's basically what he is. I mean, he's awkward, but he's he's cool. But I I I mean, I guess I could say that yes, there have been a lot of students who are like Napoleon Dynamite. He acts this way, and then it's always so nice that we you know we see different people from a different town. So I mean, he, so he's not the only one. I mean, there's a lot of weird characters going around, They're all zany and quirky. In that sort of way, so that's what I expect. Now I know this movie did actually had an animated series that aired on Fox uh, uh, later on, and sad to say, it, which I wish it lasted more. Yeah, it was very short lived. Um, I think it might have a DVD release, but otherwise, um, that's a shame because it, it was nice to actually have the original. Uh, cast members back again doing the voices of the characters as we all know. It's like, I always wanted to see more adventures of Napoleon Dynamite going around doing the usual stuff. Especially with his friends and family. That's what, Okay, yeah, I know. I'm taking so long. I'm sorry. I'm so, this always happens to me. But here's a t-shirt that I got. It says, Flipping sweet, and it shows Napoleon Dynamite right there. <laughs> okay, in that red shirt. I also had uh, another T-shirt that that has a plate that's that has all the tater tots, and it says, "Give me some of your tots." On that shirt, and I also had the both for Pedro hat, and I even had the uh, the calendar and some of the other stuff from the movie. But unfortunately, it's in all my containers, so, I, so I'm going to have a hard time getting them out. <laughs> so it's okay. Um, well, I'm sorry I, I took a lot longer than I thought, but I just can't help it. Yeah. So anyway, let, let's get to the review already for its 15th anniversary. <sighs> hard to believe. It stars John Heater, Efren Ramirez... Tina Majorino, who you may have known from the movie Waterworld, along with uh, Andre, yeah, the seal. And she also went on to do uh, Alice in Wonderland, where she played Alice. In 1999, the TV movie that aired on NBC with Martin Short, Gene Wilder, and all the rest of the cast. I have that on DVD, by the way. Aaron Rule, John Grice, who was in films like um, Taken as well as uh, The Monster Squad. Remember them? Haley Duff, yes, the older sister of Hilary Duff. Unlikable character, too, but then again, I guess at times she does play an unlikable bitch. Isn't that funny, though? Because. You get Haley Duff who plays an unlikable bitch while her sister is an unknowingly nails on the chalkboard performance that she always plays because she's basically Lizzie McGuire. I mean, part of that just makes you want to fucking cringe. <sighs> yeah. The less we say about her, the better. Um, Emily Kennard. Uh, Shondrea Avery, Sandy Martin, uh, Dyrich Bader, yes, from 
from shows like The French Prince of Bel Air as well as uh, The Drew Carey Show, yeah. Trevor Snar, and Ellen Duplin. It's written by Jared Hiss along with his wife, Jerusha, and it's directed by, once again, Jared Hess. The movie begins set in a small town, Preston, Idaho. Yeah, it's a farming town. You know, we see all these farms and these small houses, and and it has like a desert-like uh, town that you'll never expect. So that sort of town. We meet a socially awkward 16-year-old teenager named Napoleon Dynamite, who's played by John Heater, who lives with his grandmother. Carlina, played by Sandy Martin, along with his older brother, Kip, played by Aaron Rule, who's an unemployed, 32 years old, spends hours on the internet chat rooms talking to his girlfriends, including his soulmates, and inspiring as a cage fighter. Of course, uh, <laughs> Both uh, Napoleon and um, and Kip decided to sign up for Wex Quando, who was played by Darvich Bader. Yeah, this is where they try to you know teach all the skills and everything, you know, how to become a cage fighter. <laughs> yeah, we know that scene where <laughs> where Kip actually sucks at his reflexes. So this is where you know they they do that fight. <laughs> And, <laughs> and and then he says, "I'll get it." Just when the the door uh, rings, and then he just slaps him in the face. <laughs> okay, but that's when uh, he he meets um, a shy girl who sells all these uh, beauty products and glamour shots and all that, named Deb, who's played by Tina Margarino who actually uh, left uh, her stuff inside yeah, just when Kip actually makes fun of uh, Deb because you know, she's trying to earn a lot for so she can be able to get more for for her college funds because yeah, she wants to go to college anyway <laughs> so Napoleon daydreams his way through Preston High School where he spends time just dueling the ligers, yeah, a male lion, which is a mix between a male lion and a female tiger. You know, he does uh, do his reports, school's reports, and then he has to deal with, you know, bullies who torment him, such as that obnoxious sports jock named Dawn and the school bully Randy. You know, goes around putting him in a headlock even pushes him back into these colorful lockers and then just does a kick. Yeah. He does also love to make stories of himself and with his outlandish, uh, unique skills of his. But he does have a sullen and aloof personality, yes. Because he talks in a deeper, monotone voice of his. And yeah, he does come up with catchphrases such, such as, Such idiot! Flippin' sweet! That sort of thing. Meanwhile, Napoleon's grandmother, Carlina. Anyway, me meanwhile, Carlinda, Napoleon's grandmother, as he breaks her caucus in a quad bike uh, accident, you know, trying to ride um, all the way into the sand dunes with her boyfriend. So she wants to be in the hospital for a little while. And asks uh, Uncle Rico to take care of the boys, even though they're not babies. So, and Uncle Rico is played by uh, Jonathan Grice, who is basically what he is a middle aged, flirtatious, steak loving former athlete. Yeah, because he, he was a football player. He loves to throw these. Uh, long uh, froze up in the air and, and he's very good at it like he 
he basically froze those long froze like it goes up to a hundred like over like a hundred miles per hour in that sort of way so he so he, he's basically awesome but at the same time he's an asshole I mean he goes around treating Napoleon like shit you know like you know, there are times where he, he starts to torment him by actually throwing Kip's steak all the way straight into his face and and those yeah when he was riding on the bike you know with his his new best friend that I'm gonna get to and also invades uh, his privacy by going inside uh, his girlfriend's uh, house because he was he's about to uh, ask her you know for for a prom date is to take her out to the dance which we're gonna get to as well sort of all of that combined but not only that but he also um, joins in with Kip you know to make a get which quick scheme you know by selling all these uh, 24 or 32 piece sets of Tupperware you know, that way they can earn a lot of money, enough to actually pay for, get this, a time machine, Muckleus. <laughs> yeah, so that way they can go back in time to the year 1982. That was his year, his best year, where, you know, he becomes like an athlete again, you know, going back to his good old days. But of course, he does uh, live inside a camper band yeah, where where it has that seven-ish aesthetic uh, quality to it. So yes, he lives there, but he drives around and <laughs> does hang out his clothes outside and does around everything. But but anyway, he sells all these items door to door, so that way they'll earn more money. But even though. Kip is, you know, trying, trying to take some time off, you know, going back on the chat room, you know, talking to uh, his girlfriend, which we're gonna meet. <laughs> okay, so that way we'll have plenty of time while working. So anyway, when Napoleon Dynamite uh, becomes friends with two students, yeah, which I already mentioned, Deb. We also meet Pedro, played by Ephraim Ramirez, who's a who's a very calm, soft-spoken student from Jerez, Mexico. So they begin to have some conversations, you know, even take some of his tater tots while having some corn dogs. You know, they they basically explain their problems, um, that sort of thing. But then they're actually on a preparation for the high school dance, yeah, the prom, where uh, Pedro asks Summer Reetley, played by Haley Duff, who's a popular, very snobby and unlikable bitch, <laughs> to be his uh, dance partner, but she refuses. Uh, during P.E., um, Napoleon was just playing teeter ball, you know, where he was just hitting the ball. It's going around in circles. Uh, Summer uh, came up to him, uh, sending the, him a message uh, to Pedro because uh, Pedro wanted to ask her out, but he received his rejection through the message. So he said no. So that sucks. But then he asks uh, Deb, and what do you know? She accepts. But uh, Napoleon, on the other hand, doesn't have a date. So Pedro basically encouraged him to, to find one. And that's when he picks an attractive and popular character. Because well, apparently Napoleon only has good skills, but he wants to go out. but. None of the girls out there wants to go out with a guy with just a few skills, only great skills. 
So anyway, he, he asked uh, Trisha, which happens to be friends with Summer. And she's played by Emily Kennard. Um, so, he actually found her through the school yearbook and decides to draw a picture of her, thinking that this is the best drawing he ever had. Well, that's what he thinks. But Trisha just goes completely disgusted. You see that look on her face. But, well, uh, Trisha's mom just says, well, you're going to take her to the dance, no matter what. Because, um, because, uh, Trisha's mom actually has sympathy. So I'm thinking that this would be, um, this would be nice uh, for Trisha to go out with. But it makes it even worse because Rico started to tell a bunch of embarrassing stories about Napoleon. Yeah, because he goes around telling it straight to uh, Trisha Mutter, to Trisha's mother just when he was about to sell this, the set piece of Tupperware. Um, <laughs> which, uh, that's where um, he decides to put uh, Kip in a headlock. He actually scraped off uh, the mole on his neck. Trying to embarrass him right in front of everyone. So, anyway. But as the dance um, goes by, uh, this is where Napoleon finally picks uh, a nice suit, yeah, a brown suit, at, at a local uh, thrift store. He just went out with uh, Pedro, and that, and he was getting ready to go for the dance, but he had to be picked up by Uncle Rico first to take him there. But first, he had to sell his uh, items which he took way too long that he decided to go by himself until he was picked up by Pedro's cousins. <laughs> and then and they just go straight into um, Trisha's uh, house so now um, so that way she'd be picked up and get ready for the dance. And while they were there uh, Trisha just meets uh, Summer Along with, uh, along with Dawn, so yeah, not trying to introduce to Napoleon, he just just left him there. So then Napoleon just feels, you know, upset. Goes to the bathroom, and then you know, trying to trying to see how he looks, and then he goes back, and that's where he spots uh, Pedro and. And Deb, you know, they were dancing together, and then that's, you know, he was hoping maybe he'll get a chance to dance with Trisha, but since that didn't happen, I mean, he thought that he went, she went to the bathroom. So now, um, well, Pedro offered um, Napoleon to dance with Deb, you know, if, if we can't find her. So that's what uh, he was doing. So it, it was a lovely dance between Napoleon and Deb and <laughs> and Napoleon loves uh, her dress with the sleeves <laughs> and meanwhile um, Pedro suddenly saw a bulletin board where he found out that there's a student body uh, president uh, campaign that's going around so he wants to sign up um, which he doesn't know how which he thought this would be a good time for him, and and that's where Napoleon decided to join him as his uh, his manager and bodyguard, and and he also wants to vote for him as well, uh, as well as some of the other students too. But of course, you know, he's competing with another uh, candidate, Summer. <laughs> so now everyone's going to vote for Summer. Which is going to be a really hard uh, campaign because at that point on, that's when Pedro suddenly feels very sick. He started sweating a lot. I mean, he explains about what happened. Where at first he started to drink some cold water with ice, but that didn't do anything. So then he wants up in the tub. 
you know, with all of, uh, all these religious, with all these candles laying around, with all these uh, religious uh, pictures, which also includes Guadalupe. I'm hoping that this will calm him down, you know, cool him off, but that didn't help either. So what happened was he shaved his entire head, so that's why he's all wrapped around in a hoodie. So now um, the best way to help him out was to find him a wig, and that's when they that's when he went that's when Napoleon, along with Pedro, went straight to the strip mall, the glamour shot, yeah, which is the same place where uh, Rico actually got his picture taken, you know, because he was doing his fist, yeah, that uh, Dev had to tell him to do. Yeah, because he, he was getting a picture taken uh, along with Kip. And sorry to pretend that you're, <laughs> you're weightless and you're in inside a you're inside a mythical land filled with seahorses around in, in the ocean. So <laughs> that was cool. Yeah, while well, they were going out bowling and and selling some more items, so they become more. <laughs> Some more of a, a business run for themselves. So anyway, so they were the ones who picked um, the the wig, a a woman's wig, so that way he'll put it on on him, so it become like a medieval warrior type. So <laughs> so anyway, they're, they're so that's where he was given a makeover to make him look, you know, sweet, flipping sweet. So. As the campaign starts, you know, they they even throw in the, like other stuff um, for the campaign, like for example, the panada. Yeah, like they did a panada of uh, of the candidates. Yeah, summer, and they're going around, you know, hitting the piano so they can get candy. But unfortunately, it was they decided to ban that because uh, it's part of the school regulations. So that's why he couldn't do it. He was almost disqualified, but he wasn't. So he's still running for can. So he's running. So he's still running for student body president. Uh, but meanwhile, Napoleon is trying uh, his best for because he found out that there's a skit that he had to perform after the speech, and once all the students vote for those candidates. So he's actually practicing uh, his dance moves that he got at the local thrift store, <laughs> which is called the Quan's Dance Grooves. Yeah, sort of like a parody of Darren's uh, Dance Grooves. Yeah, you know that one. Um, so he, he's doing it mostly to to win medals and be able to do a lot of fame for popularity. Yeah, he's trying to fit in. Um, because he also, because also Napoleon and Pedro had entered uh, a future Farmers of America, America competition where they started to grade milk and cow udders. Of course, um, he does go around the facilities, you know, going inside the chicken coop. Yeah, he also asks the farmer, "Do they have large talons?" That sort of thing. <laughs> But of course, they even had so yeah. He hangs around with with the students uh, joining in because they were members, and, and they go around having you know picnic, you know, just having some you know, hard boiled eggs, some sandwiches, and a nice cold uh, drink. And yeah, they put eggs on there, which <laughs> it's all filled with flies, infested with them. Yeah, there was a lot of flies around, but hey. And he had to deal with that a lot. Uh, <laughs> okay. So, Rico's ongoing scale schemes cause a, a confliction with Napoleon because this is where he starts spreading rumors uh, towards him and this is where it, it becomes an embarrassment that it makes him into a shallow person. And that's why Deb suddenly... Uh, calls him out after what Rico did uh, to Deb and telling out outright righteous lies. 
you know, by showing the, the flyers of, of breast enhancers. Because after all, Rico's an idiot. But he got his karma at the end when he, he found out that once he uh, started to go straight into Rex Quando's house to meet his wife, uh, <laughs> yeah, his wife, uh, who's basically is a bodybuilder, as you can pretty much tell. Uh, <laughs> that's when suddenly Rex uh, beats the shit out of him completely just when he's about to show his wife um, those breast enhancers by giving a demonstration by these uh, pans um, now by the time election day starts that's where summer gives a speech and this is where they start doing their skit which is a, a dance skit to the song larger than life by Backstreet Boys yeah Go figure. Uh, with the school club, it joins in with Trish, you know, Trisha, and the rest of her friends. But then Pedro suddenly gives an unimpressive speech because he was very nervous about this. He really was. But then he was also discovering that he had to perform a skit, but he can't do it. So, but to save uh, Pedro's campaign. This is where Napoleon joins to the rescue by actually performing a dance skit which happens to have the song Can't Heat by uh, Jama Kwai. I don't know if I said his name right, but whatever. But that routine alone just causes a standing ovation and yes, the, the entire students applaud completely. I mean, and that dance move was really awesome. I mean, the way he did it, I mean, he really knows those skills. He had to practice a lot having to do those dance moves. But I love that song, too, Can't He, because that was a song I listened to uh, back when I was in Oregon in 1999. So I, I even saw the music video, too, on, on the Box Music Network. Yeah, you know that channel, which was a pay-per-view uh music video channel where you get to uh, call them up to ask them what song you like to pick but you have to pay to, to do so yeah that channel um, and it really works so well with that um, I just love it so then we learned that Pedro's now um, class president so they, the entire family celebrates with uh, a Mexican cake yeah so Congratulations. Kip and LaFonda, yes, they both met together. And because LaFonda was also the one that gave uh, Napoleon uh, the cassette that has the song, too, cause while Napoleon was uh, practicing his dance moves <laughs> that caused him all sweaty. He was wearing his endurance uh, baby blue uh, <laughs> unicorn shirt. And yeah, LaFonda is, is the black girl, and he's played by Shadrella Avery. Yeah, Kip just dresses up like a hip-hop posse, you know, with bling-blings around and, and a cap, and goes around saying, peace out. <laughs> and they both got married, too. Um, in the post credits scene at, at the end of the movie, um, they actually had a wedding, you know, with the family joined around, and... Meanwhile, uh, they, they're they happily in, in love. They, you know, Kip had to sing a, like a wedding song. Meanwhile, Napoleon shows up with the stallion, so that way they can go on a wild honeymoon together. <laughs> and he says at the end, Lucky! Yeah. I just had to mention it right away. But yeah, they were leaving on their bus to Michigan. While we go, going back to his cabin band, you know, doing his uh, football fro videos and stuff, or any other objects he does, he reunites with his girlfriend. It looks a little bit like uh, Lucy Lou right there. I'm not even so sure that was her, but 
it's it's just weird. And then um, Carlinda came back uh, from recovery, and both Napoleon and Deb together reconciled after what happened. So they they made it up okay, and they decided to play teeter ball together. And that's when the song uh, "Ren and Rome." The promise uh, plays at the background, and the movie ends before we got to the post credits. So. <laughs> well, as everybody puts it out, I mean, this is definitely my favorite comedy of 2004, and it really spoke to me completely. I mean, I love these zany, quirky characters as we explained already in this review. Um, I mean they were very fun. I really got to know these characters very well, especially in a small town called Preston, Idaho. I mean a, definitely a, a farming town. You know we see all these farms around. I mean there's even a scene where where a farmer actually gets to shoot. <laughs> I know there's animal cruelty there but that don't worry, don't worry. I mean it's not shown like off screen a bit but <laughs> however the kids had to be shocked and horror when when the school bus uh, drove around and yeah this is where the farmer shoots the, the cow right in front of everyone and they're all screaming in horror yeah. and speaking of which uh, during the start of the, the film you know just when we got to the opening credits which looks very impressive too um, where they show the um, all these uh, objects on screen, you know they use, they actually use uh, all the plates, yeah, you know, where they put all the condiments and letters and words with with the credits, and then they show the school ID of Napoleon Dynamite, yeah, it even says Preston High School, 2004 and 2005, which it's funny considering that even though the movie is set in 2004. The movie pretty much uh, has a bit of an 80s and 90s nostalgia in the mix because that's where you started hearing 80s and 90s music and then you started seeing some decors and all that and the way they look, the way they dress, you know, like they started to look more blue collar or, or they look quite, you know, different from one another and the way their houses they live and all this technology they had you could tell because they had VCRs, computers and old TV sets and it, yeah I mean it, it looks basically 80's and 90's right there so so it's basically dated the technology that they have but from the past so they were still using it uh, during the 2000's so it really really works so it seems like not everything has changed. I, I love that. And I love the characters, once again. I mean, I love the actors who portray the roles. I mean, John Heater definitely gives us an, an awesome performance as Napoleon Dynamite. The way he plays him, the way he looks, the way he acts. I mean, this is fun. And... <laughs> Efren Ramirez um, playing Pedro, you know, the shy, soft-spoken you know, Mexican uh, student. Also, uh, Deb as a shy girl, you know, trying to get to college, you know, for selling all of her products and taking glamour shots. Yep. Played by uh, Tina Margarino. And she's very good in this. Um, so is uh, Jonathan Grice as Uncle Rico, Sandy Martin as uh, Carlina, and Napoleon Dynamite's as grandmother. Uh, uh, Die Rich Bader, I mean, yes, I mean, even though it was a bit of a small role, but it was nice to see him, you know, play like a tough guy role, you know, wearing these, uh, <laughs> these American pants, you know, doing his sensei and <laughs> and he has a wife who's like a bodybuilder type but I love how he's doing his practice with Kip and that was just fun and you know Kip 
Yeah, of course, Kip. Yeah, you know, there's a chat with Babes all day, and, and you got Lawanda from Detroit. Um, all these characters that you got. Uh, and of course, Haley Duff, who. Eh. She was a snobby bitch, but she was tolerable enough for the movie. Um, but just to think that this was produced by MTV Films, yes, with they, which they join in with Paramount Pictures because they co-produced the film, and also for international releases with Fox Searchlight Pictures, uh, 20th Century Fox's uh, art house division. You know, they, they joined in for, for the for this particular production. Yeah, you know, with uh, Jared Hiss along with his wife. I mean the budget was only four hundred thousand dollars. Very small budget right there. But for the box office results it made forty six point one million dollars. So it was uh, financially success as it follows. Because I actually went to see the movie in late summer, so I had a chance to see it before they stopped playing it in theaters. But it had a very good summer run, all the way until it finally hits home video and it became a cult classic over the years. Yeah, I mean everyone wants to be like Napoleon Dynamite, you know, with his uh, amazing skills that he has. There's no doubt about it. And yeah, there are people who. Who wouldn't understand the movie for its comedy and and the way the characters act and, and the way they portray and the way they they look? I mean, I mean, it's hard to believe. Out of all the critics out there, Roger Ebert gave it one and a half star, which that's got to be one of his worst reviews I've ever heard from him. I'm sorry, but from a guy who recommends some other films I hate, and he always. You know, this is all the ones I love. Well, I, I respect the guy because he's, even though he's a legendary film critic, and he's no longer with us, but there, there are times where I just totally disagree with him. So, but I, I understand, you know, there are people who don't like the movie, and that's fine. Um, I, I respect everyone, but for those who do love it, like I do, and go completely nuts over it, I'm just happy that, you know, this movie had a cult fan base. And in fact, even Preston, Idaho is becoming the, the biggest of them all. And um, they even had festivals there too. So yes, yeah, so it, it was so popular that they had a lot of merchandising. People wear the shirts from the movie. People actually wear a lot of stuff. Everything. So it was cool. And that's why I love this film. Because it really develops what social life looks like. Or the way we feel. Or the way we deal with also to note though that there's, there's even one scene where you know, Napoleon Dynamite was doing a happy handstand scene where we actually show a picture of, you're going to love this, Snoopy and Woodstock. <laughs> you know, where he's wrapped up in Linus's blanket and they're cheering on with the flags that says wow. Yeah, I thought wow, that was really interesting considering that, well, there's a difference alike here with Napoleon and Charlie Brown. But. I'm surprised that there's not a Charlie Brown uh, picture in there. But it's nice to see that. Because, you know, two, those are two of my favorites right there. <laughs> so, yeah. Uh, I can go on and on and on. I, I pretty much explained everything. You know, the entire review, the plot. <sighs> wow. Has a great soundtrack, as I mentioned. All this other stuff. So, And we had the animated series that I wish lasted longer. But it was awesome to see that for a while. I mean, it has beautiful cinematography from Mon Powell. The editing was done so well by Jeremy Kuhn, um, who's also the producer, joining in with Chris White, Sean Cavell, and, and Joey White, yeah, who was responsible for the additions that the cast had to join in. Everything done directly from uh, Palooka which is wig in Spanish uh, for that short film that was only eight minutes uh, shot in black and white eight millimeter and John Heater actually played Seth that inspired the character and 
which they had two characters that inspired the, the Pedro character. You know, they had to go to the first store, but first they had to go to a local uh, gas station to get more money. You know, winning the lottery, but they couldn't. But they had to have one of his friends going, but once the, the clerk looks at his mustache, well, he got it, and then there you go. They earn enough money to go to the first store. Because he wanted to get a fanny pack, while they had to give him a wig, because he shaved his hair. So they gave him a wig instead. And there you go. <laughs> that was only just nine minutes short right there. And this is definitely Jared Hess's passion project, because he did it when he was at school. Yeah, with his friend uh, John Heater, so that's how they came together to make that short film, as I mentioned. So who would have thought that that one short film can come to life? It works. <laughs> yeah, wow. And I, I love all the funny moments in the film. I mean, no doubt about it. I mean, there's like... I mean, there's like scenes where, where I, I know uh, Napoleon was going after Rico, you know, just throwing the like an orange, and and he was about to put him in a headlock. He beats the shit out of him, and, and well, he was lucky. He, you know, he got him in the gut, and then he just <laughs> he ran straight into the fence, and, and he fell, and just ran as fast as he can, or you know, there's, uh, you know, the funny moments uh, where, he, where he found out that Kip is a cage fighter, and this is where he's explaining about his moves, so they practice, and then he bitch slaps him to him at the end, so he got it, or any other funny moments here and there, I mean, it, it's... I, I mean, it's just, it's just downright hilarious. I mean, I, that's where I got the, the humor. See, that's, now you know why I have a sense of humor right there. So you can find that on the DVD and Blu-ray. So, for a 500 million no, budget. So anyway, yeah, I mean, I'm sorry. But anyway, it's definitely the best film of 2004 on my list. Uh, one of the best comedies ever. You, you can go on and on talking about it with all the funny scenes, the catchphrases, and all of that. I, I just never get tired of it. So anyway, that's uh, Napoleon Dynamite, and I give the movie, what else, five stars. Freaking sweet! I'm, I'm Joseph A. Sabora, and I'll see you later. Bye.